this video is for you if you want to teach some people to program in the language Scratch. I think a lot of the stuff relates to other block-based languages, but I'll focus on Scratch here. Okay, number one, emphasize that Scratch is real coding. It's real computer science that they're learning. It's real programming that they're learning. It really looks like a game, and I find a lot of kids think that Scratch is just a game, but help them understand, no, what they're doing, it looks like a game. It's colorful. It's beautiful. But what they're doing is really the intellectual work that computer scientists and programmers do. Number two. Have students read code aloud. This is just a common debugging strategy, sort of in general, of like going through some code line by line. It's helpful to do it in Scratch uh, to have, because the blocks have such an, uh, descriptive words in them, uh, and you can have students do that with a partner. So I'll read it to my partner, and then they're going to either act it out physically or on paper. Okay. Number three, use implicit and explicit variables. Uh, some studies have shown that not a lot of students use the explicit variable where they create a new variable on the Scratch projects that are shared. Uh, but actually, even if students aren't doing that, there's a lot of variables in Scratch, even just like the position and the rotation and the volume and the tempo. And so help students identify all of those are examples of variables, just variables that Scratch and the programming language knew we'd want. And so later on, they're going to be creating their own, but they already have experience with, with variables. Number four, in debugging, I found, find it super helpful uh, to have students add sound blocks or say blocks within their code. In other programming languages, it's common to do print statements so that it, your code prints things out when it gets to a particular part in the code. And you can translate that, translate that same strategy into Scratch. Another question that I find is super helpful is asking students, oh, if I put a sound block in here, how many times would I hear it? And that can help distinguish between forever if and if and different looping constructs. I can help students pay attention to that by saying, what would happen if we put a sound block here? Number five, contrast set and change blocks. So in Scratch, uh, when you want to change the value of a variable, you have two options. One is you can do it based upon the current value of the variable. So I say, change, uh, so I say set ignores the previous value and change modifies it. So it, it doesn't ignore it. Uh, and students will often in their program switch between those two and get those mistakes. So I, I think it, reinforcing that and, and asking students, oh, do you want a change here or a set here can be super helpful. Number six, I find that students can get really confused by some things in Scratch, specifically when uh, if you take a play note block and then another play note and then another play note, if it doesn't have the um, until done or for broadcast the and wait, it can be super confusing because like say I play the sound meow, play sound meow, play sound meow. Actually, Scratch starts each one of those even without waiting for the previous one to end. So you just hear meow instead of meow, meow, meow. So I tell students to always use the until done or the end wait, whatever is the one that's going to block that line before it goes to the next one. I think that's a lot easier for students to work with consistently. Number seven. Let students write bad code. This one is maybe a little more controversial, but even after I've taught students repeat, I find that they will solve a problem that sort of naturally works with repeat and is super tedious without repeat, and they'll write it without repeat. And when I've tried to intervene, if I push too much, it doesn't usually go well, and so what I've done is I'll suggest like, oh, could you write this with a repeat? And if they are like, oh yeah, and take it up, go for it. But otherwise, if they're like, I let them finish the code, even if it's super tedious, without repeat. And then once they have working code that they can start from and reason with, then I say, okay, how can you modify this code to work with repeat? Okay, so I try and uh, let them write that bad code, because I think it can be a powerful tool for helping them really understand that abstraction of repeat or whatever it is. Okay, good luck teaching Scratch.